Hey guys, it's Zach from The Incredible Impression, currently in my backyard here, and today we start the incredible project of taking a Chinese Rickenbacker 325 C6 or C58 model and turning it into a John Lennon look-alike 325 C58 Capri. This is also the guitar that he used on the first Ed Solomon show. Now John had two Rickenbackers. The first one was from uh, a natural color and which is just like this one and then he turned it and painted it black and did a lot of modifications on it. There's way too many to count but um, it came out as it did on the Ed Solomon show. Now, what you didn't get to see was uh, there are f quite a few colored pictures out there, and I will give credit to um, Andy Babiuk, who is the author of Beatles Gear, who uh, is pretty much the go-to guy for Beatle instruments. And there's colored pictures in there of John's Rickenbackers and... Um, it also shows what John's Rickenbacker C58 looks like today. So what I did was I'm going to show you guys a preview of the first video I did on this guitar. So let's take a look at that right now. This is what has arrived. This looks like a... Rickenbacker John Lennon 325 V59 or C58 Hamburg model um, but it's not actually it is one of those Chinese replicas and this is going to turn into a project as you can see the strings are loosened up they're not uh, workable in any way right now I have to install the spring then for the tremolo and um, there's a lot of work to be done on this baby so I'm gonna show you step by step what we'll be doing and this is in the natural finish which is how Lennon's originally uh, came but there's a reason for that my goal is to take this guitar and take it to my luthier and have him pretty much take everything out of it and all I will be left with is the empty shell and then we will do the process of painting it black and I have some other accessories that I will be having my luthier replace these with and I'll show you the box then at the very end of all the stuff that was taken off and replaced Okay guys, we are back, and as you saw, that was the preview from when it arrived. Now, I took it to my luthier and pretty much had him take everything out of it. Uh, just uh, strip it down to the bare shell. And this is what it looks like now. As you can see, it's just an empty shell, and however, some work needs to be done on it. So what we're going to do right now i think i can get this done in one day because i planned a lot for it i've made a checklist over here it's always good to have a plan and a checklist so you know what you're doing so i'll pop a picture of the checklist up and what we're gonna do is i'm gonna take my roommate's electric sander here and i'm going to first of all uh rough sand it now if you can i don't know if you can see but I did a little uh, sanding with uh, some sandpaper just to see how much I could get out of it. Um, and it's not much. So I realized, you know, that I need the electric sander to go with it. It's kind of windy out here. It rained earlier. Um, but before we get started, I want to wish uh, my nephew, Jonathan Stone, a very, very happy birthday. A very happy 26th birthday. And you've been a great part of my life for the last 10 to 11 years. And I can't, uh, nothing thrills me more than having you 
your sister and the, your family in my life. So I love you, kiddo. Okay, let's start doing this. Um, I'm gonna rough sand it first, and then I'm gonna go back and fine sand it and just try to get the nooks and crannies out of it. Then we will tape off the neck. I will put a little piece of tape up here to protect the truss rod, and we will do a few coats of paint. Uh, the first one will be a regular matte, matte finish, matte, whatever you call it. And then we're going to let that dry. We're going to go back then and do a second coat of matte painting. Then we're going to go back and do some relicking to it. And relicking, I'm going to throw a few pictures up of what John's Rickenbacker actually looked like so you can see where I'm getting at. Now I know the relicking is not going to be exact, but I'm going to try to get it as close as I can to John's. So with that being said, let's get to sanding, shall we? Okay guys, so I finished the rough sanding part. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys right off the top. I am in no way an expert on doing this. I'm not a luthier or anything. I'm not an expert on guitars, um, but neither was John Lennon. But um, so I just did a rough sand and then I went back with a piece of the sandpaper from the machine and I just sanded out the rough uh, edges and also I got rid of some of the clear coat that was in the hard to reach spots like right back right back here and over here and stuff there's a little bit of the clear coating left so again I'm not an expert just one more time I'm not an expert so for all you guitar experts out there and luthiers who want to say oh he did this wrong or you should have done this better. Just warning you guys, I am not a professional. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a the machine again, the electric sander, and I'm just going to go over in a nice fine grid sand and just smooth it out the best I can. And then we'll see what happens after that. Um, as long as this weather holds up, maybe we can get to painting. But uh, stay tuned. So I went back, I didn't show you guys the fine sanding because I just figured it wasn't really interesting, but <laughs> this is where we are now. And as you can see, there's still a little bit of the clear coat there, but again, I'm not too concerned about that because the, the goal here is to gather, to get the look straight and proper of Lennon's guitar. So... As you can see, I, I went back and I did all this stuff here, and I sanded down the best I could. There's still a little bit of clear coat back here, but that's going to be all covered up anyways. All right, guys, so I did it. Again, I did the best I could. There's still some very uh, shiny spots, but, you know, I just have what I have to work with, and so... What we're going to do is, as you can see, it's nice and finely sanded down. Done everything like that. And I've also taped off the neck and the nut up here. You can see I've taped off the truss rod, the truss rod there. So now we get to the exciting part, which I think is really going to bring this beauty to life. We're going to paint it. So I have two kinds of paints here. These are just uh, Rust-Oleum American accents that I bought at uh, Walmart because I didn't want to go and spend the like $39, $40 at Stumac to get the, um, you know, the uh, black finish. Um, plus John's, I have a, uh, an ultra matte, like I said, and I've also got a gloss finish. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get as much from this ultra matte finish that I can um, because, again, John's wasn't really um, 
uh, painted professionally, you know, he just took some spray paint and just, and from what I understand, what uh, spray paint was left afterwards, uh, rumor has it that George uh, used it to uh, spray the back and sides of his uh, Gretsch Duo Jet. So, and back in the day, you know, they, they were changing things around, you know, everything was black for them because, you know, Brian Epstein, obviously, they had come, uh, they had come under management to him, so he uh, wanted a very proper look for them, black suits, black ties and stuff. So along with that, they, uh, John painted his guitar. And so, uh, we're gonna continue here and uh, we'll see how far it comes. Keep watching. Okay guys, yeah, I apologize about the uh, bad quality of how I'm angling everything to film it, but, you know, I'm I'm still kind of new at doing vlogs and stuff, so um, I'm not a professional at it yet. I'm not like some of those great vloggers out there um, who know what they're doing and have all the camera equipment. I just have my phone, and I have a little, like, $10 tripod that I got on Amazon, so just bear with me on this, but... Possibly you can see, get a good idea of what I'm doing. I did the back, the sides, and the front. I did the top area. Now I gotta go back, after this dries, I gotta go back and do the neck. And then I have to do the second coat of black. But first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and relic it. Kind of mark up some dings and scratches where John's guitar was. And uh, we'll go from there then. So. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So what I did was I did the whole thing in black. I did a couple coats. And you'll notice that and I'll try to do some close-ups here. Forgive me for the lighting. The sun's really bright. So what I did was I went back and I basically, I basically used a, a flathead screwdriver. And I just went along and... Just kind of dinged it up a little bit just put some scratches on it and took some sandpaper and just took some of the black off and down here I kind of dinged it up a little bit and stuff you can see right here along there because uh, John's guitar which I'll uh, post a uh, couple pictures up of those uh, were pretty much uh, his guitar was pretty banged up by the time they got on the Sullivan show. So I'm trying to replicate that as best I can. So I think it turned out pretty good. So the paint is dry as I just showed you. And now we're going to do the final step. We're going to do a semi-gloss clear coat. Because from what I read about in the Beatles gear book about John's actual guitar, um, in the 70s he took it to a buddy of his, uh, Guitar Luthier in New York City. And he basically wanted it restored to its natural finish. And the gentleman's name, don't quote me on this, but it's in the Beatles gear book, which if you are a Beatles enthusiast, especially if you're a tribute band or whatever, and you want to find out everything you can about the Beatles and their guitars, and drums go out and order a copy of the book Beatles gear it's written by Andy Bebyuk who is in Rochester New York he owns a music store uh, just go on there you can get it through his website too it's uh, Andy Babyuk's fabgear.com and you can find everything in the book um, but what the story as the story goes um, when John took his guitar to his buddy in uh, uh, New York, now again, don't quote me on this, but the guy's name, I think, was Don uh, DiMarcio or something of that nature. Um, but his name was definitely Don Marcino or whatever. Um, he said that when John gave him his guitar to be restored, he said the guitar was just a mess. It, it had scratches, the... Uh, the middle pickup, the center pickup was uh, 
not wired. Um, it had a whole bunch of problems. The net was warped. Um, he had uh, issues with the bridge because he used that little bow tie bridge, which will go on here. Um, I have my luthier uh, taking care of that. And uh, he's going to wire it all back up and stuff. And you'll see the finished product then. Um, but also, uh, the brush, there was brush strokes all over it from the paint job back in 61 or 62, I believe, when he painted his guitar. And he said that you could obviously tell that the guitar was not painted well and not refinished and also it had a mix of different strings on it it had a bunch of flat wounds and round wounds and it was just totally you know whacked up and out of shape so um the goal here is to get it to look like it did when john messed it all up um of course it'll be wired up properly and everything um but this guitar will be used for a lot of shows with my band um and uh, we're going to be called The Experience, a tribute to the Beatles. And we're also going to be doing a show called Post Fab, which deals specifically with their solo years, nothing but their solo years um, from 1970 to today. And um, a lot of bands out there, you know, they do a Wings tribute or they do a Paul McCartney tribute. Uh, there's a band that I'm friends with from New Jersey called the Mahoney Brothers. And they do a bunch of different acts. They do... Um, uh, Jukebox Heroes Live, which is a tribute to like Jerry Lee Lewis, Neil Diamond, Elvis, um, Buddy Holly, all those greats. And um, then they do a full Beatles tribute called Long Live the Beatles. But then they do a show called The Beatles and Beyond, which is a show where they, you know, they dress like they did in the 70s and stuff. And uh, they do Beatles songs, but they also mix it in with a bunch of uh, uh, solo music as well. But what we're doing is a totally... Uh, different thing. We're going for a complete solo years uh, show, um, which that band will be uh, starting uh, rehearsals in February of this coming year, 2024. But okay, let's get back to this. I don't know how I got off track. <laughs> but um, so what I'm going to do is I have a polycrylic uh, mini wax again, uh, clear semi gloss. See it right here. I just got it for like $6 at Walmart because initially I had thought of spraying it clear, but then I decided, you know, it's it's not going to look very good. It's I mean, it's going to look brand new, and I'm going for the vintage look. So I actually did a test on this. Oh, no. Yep, got a few marks here, but no one's going to see the back. <laughs> but I did a test coat on the back here. Uh, I know the view isn't really good. But um, I'll take some pictures of it and I'll post it up on here. Um, but I did a small little test run and it seemed to come out pretty good. Um, so I got to do a couple coats of it. But uh, then I'll, uh, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over and do the body. So uh, let's do this, shall we? Alright, the sun is going down, so I'm back here on my front porch, and this is what we have so far. Now, I did do the clear coat uh, brush-on finish, uh, but I realized that it wasn't really looking all that well. So, what I did was I took the uh, gloss black, and I sprayed it on, and then I just brushed it, and brushed it, and brushed it. So that now we have this, and I think it looks more true to what I wanted it to look like. So, um, as I said, the sun's going down now. Um, I'm going to have to come back to this a little later. Um, there is something else that I have uh, that I'm going to do uh, off camera, which I will go over with in the, ne uh, in the next couple of days. So... Uh, Let's uh, continue, shall we? Okay, guys, so I had a little bit of time left of daylight. So what I did was I took this metallic 
lacquer, uh, which you can buy from stumac.com. And uh, this color is pale gold. Now, the pit guard that, and the Rickenbacker logo that came with the guitar was not... <laughs> it was not the right color at all. It was a very dark, sparkly gold. And John's, as you know, was more of a, a light gold. So what I did was I took this lacquer, I sanded down the uh, uh, silver, the sparkle gold from the guitar uh, pick guard, and I used the pale gold to paint it. So now it looks more true to the John Lennon uh, Rickenbacker model. So... Um, again, I didn't show you that because, you know, you don't really need my help for doing something like that. So, but, uh, now the guitar is pretty much ready, uh, to go back into the shop and get everything put on it. So, um, as I said, I did it all in one day, um, because I also looked at it this way, you know, John and Paul or John and George, they did not, uh, they were pretty much had, a. Uh, only a few minutes, uh, I guess they were in the back of the Cavern Club and the dressing room, and they did uh, something to their guitars and all that. So so the, uh, the whole thing was done within a matter of minutes, and then they went on stage, and boom, you know, they were using their newly painted guitars. So I kind of took that concept into it and uh, just decided to do that. So um, let's... Uh, Stay, let's end this part of the vlog right here and uh, once I get everything back together and everything I will show you guys the finished product all right so it's been about two and a half months since I filmed the paint job and everything and as you can see we're still on just the empty shell uh, reason is because I went back and did uh, some touch-ups the uh, uh, you'll notice the guitar is a lot shinier now and the reason is because when I went to uh, finish it off I noticed that because I used a paintbrush with bristles I got a whole bunch of the bristles stuck <laughs> here in the guitar so I didn't want that it looked very unprofessional so I took the electric sander again I sanded it down and then I resprayed it with the gloss black fit, uh, paint, and then I went back and sprayed a clear coat on it after all, and it came out pretty darn good. And also I noticed when I was um, repainting the last time, you can see here, some of the uh, aging that I sanded off uh, really got covered up, so I had to go back and redo a lot of that. So, but the... Uh, process is uh, coming along good now I just ordered and received uh, a new set of burns knobs and I'll pop a link in the description and a photo of where you can get them and uh, also I got a set of the Rickenbacker uh, what are they called strap buttons and I also got the Grover stay tight tuner nickel plates uh, nickel plated tuners so what I'm gonna do right now I'm, obviously I, it's now June 21st I'm not gonna have this done by the time I go to Pittsburgh for rehearsals in two weeks so because I still have to uh, uh, purchase the bow tie bridge and stuff and a quality Bigsby and the uh, Thomas-esque uh, jazz J112 strings uh, which are flat wounds like I think John used on his guitar I read somewhere where he did I don't know if it was in the Beatles gear book or what it was but in any case um, since I have all of the uh, process on painting it and everything I'm just gonna end the vlog right now and the finished final reveal will be in a separate video which will be coming I do promise you guys <laughs> so uh, thanks for sticking with me on this entire venture and I hope you learn something through it and uh, these are great guitars to have uh, if you don't want to spend the three four thousand dollars on it so um thanks for joining me and uh please subscribe and like this video and i hope you've enjoyed 
this incredible impression of adventure. Thanks, guys. See you later.